good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it may be when you are watching this 28th day of NTI video. So <clears throat> let's get started with yesterday's day 27's exit ticket. It was one division problem, a four digit divided by a two digit. So here we have 1,890 divided by 63. So I did my 63 times tables only up to the three times because I realized 63 times one equals 63, 63 times two equals 126. But then when I went to 63 times three, I got 189, which is exactly the first three digits of this four digit number. Therefore, that means 63 went into 189 three times exactly. But I worry this is where some of you made your mistakes and as to why some of you just came up with the answer of three and stopped. Because when you subtracted, you forgot there was another place value here that you have to bring down. And you have to show that 63 can't go into zero. It goes into zero zero times, and you have to place that zero there in the ones place. So therefore, you get the answer of 30. So part of the reason why I think some people made a mistake on this one was because they didn't put the three in the correct place value. You need to make sure that if you're working on these three digits, you're trying to figure out how many times 63 goes into these three digits. That means the, the number you came up with, the amount of time 63 came and went into this, these three digits, this three-digit number needs to be right above the digit on the, the farthest one on the right of these three digits. If I was trying to get 63 to go into 1, my answer would be here. Obviously, 63 doesn't go into 1. If I was trying to get 63 to go into 18, my answer would go in there, above the 8 of 18. But obviously, 63 doesn't go into 18. So, hopefully, that helps with some misconceptions and mistakes that you might have made. Now, I don't believe many students made that mistake, but it is a common misconception about making sure that you finish out the problem and determining that 63 went into zero zero times to give you a true answer of 30. Now, if you did check yourself doing 63 times 3, you would have gotten 189 only. And you should have looked at that and say, wait a second, this is 1,890, not just 189, which should also help you identify your mistake. So it is very, very important to always check yourself when it comes to division, especially. Let's move on to our first problem today of day 28, which is adding decimals. Okay, Adding decimals, there's not much of a difference compared to you know, if you're adding a two-digit plus three-digit number or three-digit plus three-digit number. Okay, It all only big difference is not forgetting your decimal. Okay? You can't forget your decimal. That's why I made it nice and red for you not to forget it. So if the number is written like this horizontally, it is highly recommended that you write it vertically on top of each other. Okay? Stack them. And I made myself a little chart here to make sure I line up all my digits in the correct place. That's a misconception students will make. Is they won't, they'll say, oh, well, okay. I'm going to write 1.7 there. Well, that means your decimal points are not lined up. You need to make sure your decimal points are lined up together. Which is why the 1 goes here in the 1's place and the seven goes here in the tenths place. So it can be sometimes helpful to actually even label your place values.
And then you'll also be able to see that that seven is a tenth, and this three is a tenth, which is why they're in the same column. Then you go from right to left, okay, which is the opposite of reading. But when you're adding, you're going from right to left, and you add up your numbers. Seven plus three, give me 10. You're going to carry a one into the ones place. One plus one plus zero equals two, which then gives me my answer of two. Don't forget about that decimal. Bring it on down. And eight hundredths is my final answer here. So remember some key things here. Stack them on top of each other. Make sure that the decimal is lined up. And, and therefore, your 1 is in the 1's column. Your 7 is in your 10's column. Your 3 is in your 10's column. And your 8 is in the 100's column for this specific type of problem. So let's go ahead and get some practice going. Number 2. We have... 3 and 65 hundredths plus 1 and 52 hundredths. So I'm going to stack them on top of each other, making sure I line up my decimal places. There's a decimal. There's the decimal. And now you go ahead and add them together by hitting the pause button now. So the answer you should have received was 5 and 17 hundredths. If you only got four here, it's because you forgot to carry over the one from the tenths. Because six plus five gives you 11, and therefore that one from 11 has to be carried over into the ones place. Let's move on to number three now. Go ahead, and this is a little bit trickier. Make sure your decimal points are lined up, and then add them ver uh, vertically. Go ahead and hit the pause button to do that now. So how many of you, when doing this, accidentally put the five in the hundredths place? We got to make sure our decimals are lined up. So I bet most of you probably didn't make that mistake. But there, that is a common mistake. Like I mentioned before, you got to make sure the decimals line up, not the digits. Don't worry about the digits lining up. Worry more so about the decimal points. You don't obviously want to change your number either. You don't want to say, oh, okay, I'll make sure my, my decimal points line up and change the number to that. This is not 10 and a point five or 10 and 5 tenths. This is 1 and 5 hundredths. So just to make your decimal line up, you don't want to just change your number. You want to make sure your number of 10 and 5 tenths stays 10 and 5 tenths. So therefore you get the answer of 25 and 56 hundredths. Let's move ahead to number 4 now. So at number 4 we have 20 and 6 tenths plus 20 and 1 hundredth. Go ahead and add these numbers up now. Hit that pause button. So here we end up if we lined everything up correctly, we placed our decimals in the correct place, we should have gotten 40 and 61 hundredths. So if you did not get this, you might have accidentally shifted these digits over in the wrong place values. The six would have been in the hundredths accidentally. You got to make sure, because that six is six tenths, but it can also be known as 60 hundredths. So if it makes you feel more confident, feel more, more at ease, feel free to just place the zero in the hundredths place value. Doing that here or even over in this last problem, then it might be a little easier to keep everything in order. All right, let's move ahead to number five. Okay, so here we have six and five hundredths plus 89 hundredths. Go ahead to add these numbers up by hitting the pause button now. So the solution you should have received for this would have been six and 94 hundredths. 
If you only got six and eighty four hundredths, it's because you had forgotten to carry over the one from the hundredths to place value. When you get five plus nine hundredths, you would have gotten fourteen hundredths carrying that one over to the tenths place value. All right, last but not least, and then you're going to have three exit ticket questions. Six and thirty-three hundredths plus sixty-three hundredths. Go ahead, hit the pause button to add those numbers up now. So the answer you should have received would have been six and ninety-six hundredths. Six and ninety-six hundredths. If you didn't receive that, there's a good chance you didn't line up your place values correctly with putting the decimal points in the correct place. So think back to the types of mistakes you might have made if you made any over the last six problems. Okay? And really think hard about what you can do not to make those mistakes again. And then go ahead and do the three problems on the exit ticket. Thank you very much for being here, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.